What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Unrest. You'll forgive my little menu screen right there. So in the last episode, we have been tasked with giving out bread and also with giving out medicine. We're still playing Bhagwan the Priest. And while I feel that I've made some mistakes, namely one in the last episode in giving out the medicine, I do think that I'm going to try and do a little bit better today. And so as we talk to people, we're kind of going to go around. We're going to figure out who's sick and who isn't. You sort of have to, like, you really have to do an interview with everybody. You don't much have a choice because there are marked people, but there are also unmarked people who will also take the medicine. And so I think the marked people are probably just like a place to start. Oh, it's Juhai. Um, Priest, is there a place I can stay where I'll be safe for a little while? Like, from everybody? Ah, yes, of course. Go to the temple tonight when J-Deep's patrols thin out. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I promise you won't forget this, if you recall. Juhai was our best friend that we ran away from our... Or Yuhai, or however you say her name. I'm not really sure, so I apologize if I'm butchering it. However, Juhai was our best friend when we ran away from the village with the previous character we were playing. And so, obviously, they made it here. Or at least Juhai did. That doesn't go well for anybody else, but... Persistent woman. Means she hasn't changed her sex in a while. She is persistently female. Hey, 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 where are you going? Don't steal from them or kill your brothers and keep them safe. That's it, right? Come on, I got a sick family to take care of. The tenants came very quickly to you. What else am I going to do with my time? My parents and husband are crippled with disease. There's no food to be had anywhere. Nothing to do but fight hunger pangs and attend speeches whenever Ron Veer can find the time to give one and hope for a priest to come by. She's, uh... She's going a little bit too quickly. A begrieved father. Let's find out. Leave me, please. There's nothing you can do. Hey, look, I know the teachings and everything, but let me be honest. I'm not sick. Nobody in my family is sick. We're all just starving. Can I get some medicine to trade? It's not how this is supposed to work. Alright, then my whole family's sick, and one dose of medicine can cure all of them. Believe that instead. Either way, you hand the medicine over, my family gets to live. Isn't that what matters? Damn, man. People putting you up hard mode style in this. I, I, I understand his rationale. I really sincerely do. It's not just about saving lives, it's controlling the spread of disease. I'll come back by here. If I still have medicine, we'll talk. Yeah, I'm gonna... I mean, at least he's being honest. Like, I always have respect for people that come out and be honest like that and just be like, listen, my family needs this. Like, at least he's being honest and he's not trying to lie to me. Let's see what's going on here. Another priest? I take it you've got some medicine for me. How much medicine ends up here, really? As best as I can tell, perhaps four doses out of every ten you hand out. It's been as high as seven out of every ten and as low as three. It really depends on what's killing more people in a given month, sickness or starvation. Honestly, though, getting it to me is a good way to make sure the people who really need medicine and bad are the ones who end up with it. I mean, anyone willing to pawn off valuables or trade good bread to get their hands on some medicine has to need it, right? Perhaps I'll come back when I've given medicine to more people who really needed it. Whenever you're ready, I'll be here. God, like some of the questions they face you with, and you could turn this whole part of the game down, and you could just move on to the next part if you want, and Ronvir doesn't get angry at you, but he's not happy either. He just kind of says that you're shirking your responsibility if you do, but you can skip this entire part and just go to the next character if you wanted to by being like, eh, I'm out. Girish. Oh, you're talking to me. Well, oh, that's just wonderful. You really are such wonderful people. Resource efficient, hardworking, honest, caring, and you know, I don't get the chance to apologize often enough for all the terrible diseases that Naga refugees brought with them. It hardly seems fair, particularly since we don't seem to have gotten infected with anything in return. I'm seeing, I'm sorry, perhaps I'm carrying something. Maybe you should keep back. I'm sure we've inflicted our share of troubles. I think he's being serious. I thought he was being sarcastic at first. No, that's not reasonable at all. Our refugees came over your slums unwanted and unasked for, permitted only because your royal family was blackmailed with the threat of revoked trade offers. So City's elite got foodstuffs and supplies, while which we would have traded with them anyways. And what does the slum dweller get? Disease, predators, and death. They should have left my people out in the dust to rot. Well... We'll go with the firm option. What I mean is, you don't need to sympathize with us. The Naga struggle to survive just as we do. 
Any Naga who cannot sympathize is a greedy fool. What right do we have to take food from the mouths of your babes? What right do we have to come to your city and ruin your lives? Not all of us disapprove of the work Ron Veer is doing. Myself, I think it's not only his right, but his duty. That's interesting, coming from a Naga. So essentially, he's taking the other side? I don't know, it's weird. Please, priest, I'm so tired these days I can barely move. I need medicine. The tenants are not to steal or to kill and to protect your brothers, right? Isn't that all we need to know? I wish that was the worst ailment that I saw. I'm sorry, but they're worse off than you. You're right, there are. Fine, just go. Leave me be. I'm trying to find people that, like, their eyeballs are falling up out of their head. Like, their scrotum falls off and they're just like, oh, that's unfortunate. But they're not even really that angry because they know that they've got worse things going on. Like, when your balls fall off and then you're still just like, well, that sucks, but I've got to worry about other things. That's the guy that I want to give medicine to. Please, the figure grasps weakly for aid but can barely speak. Give him medicine. He nods weakly and smiles. That guy can barely talk. I mean, there you go. It's a thug and a pox-ridden man. The man suddenly reaches behind his back and pulled out a short-bladed filthy knife, which he thrusts towards your face. Put all the medicine in the bag. Put it in the bag and walk away. Let's go I Ching about this. Are you alright? Come friend, let's talk. My problem? My problem is that you stupid bastards have been handing out all the medicine to the wrong people. You don't give any to street gangers or Naga or anyone who isn't one of Ron Veer's allies. Kanika promised if she gets the medicine, she'll hand it out right. Kanika is like your cousin or something like that. Asha's cousin. Kanika worked in the previous royal family. If you recall, we had a conversation with Kanika back when we were playing as Asha, when we were first in the temple. I mean, he shouldn't rob me, but I actually think Kanika would give the medicine out properly. I don't really know. There's not a right option right here. I mean, I think Kanika would give the medicine out evenly. But robbing me is not the proper way to get the medicine from me. I mean, I just want to have a discussion with him. But then again, he's probably desperate just like everybody else. I told him that I didn't trust him because that would be inside the mindset of Bogwan, who doesn't actually know Kanika. I know Kanika because I've played the game, but Bogwan doesn't know Kanika, so we'll roleplay it. I don't care if you trust me, just give me the medicine. We've already had one priest wounded today. You can't risk wounding another. Are you talking about Prabal? That lazy idiot's the reason we're doing this. It was bad enough when you were just giving medicine to Rodvir's followers, but passing it out at random's even worse. Your man can no longer be trusted with the flow of medicine. I'm not so sure. I don't want to yield the medicine, but this is making sense. We're not all like him, I promise. I'm trying hard. If anything, you're going to stop the flow of medicine. Why would Ron Veer hand it out if he just knows we're going to get robbed? I'm going to go with the middle option. We're not all like him, I promise. I'm trying very hard, and I'm sick of talking to you. Really? We actually are in a fight? I didn't even know that there was a combat system in this game. I've never been in a fight before. So Z is attack, X is block. He has a knife, I mean, I don't know how we're going to be, like, fighting. Your wounds bring you to the ground. Beyond that, your attacker takes no interest. You are still semi-conscious as he strips you of your medicine and anything else worth taking. Then he leaves you. The last thing you hear are two slum dwellers arguing over they'd be given bread for returning you to the temple steps. Wow. That really kind of makes the good guys look like the bad guys. Kanika scum. She got these assholes working for her. That's horrible. I mean, I don't think blocking would have even helped, and honestly... A tutorial would have been nice, maybe. Something to kind of teach you how to fight, but he had a knife. I'm not even sure that would have helped. You were Asha. Avanash led Asha to a rundown hideout somewhere in the city. It soon became clear that Avanash wasn't just planning an insurgency. No, the insurgency was already in progress, and people from all parts of the city had flocked to its loyalist banner. He was evidently proud of what he created, but he still wouldn't explain to Asha what role she was to play in the coming days, nor would he answer any of her questions. So, we've still got a bangle. We've got a crown. God, that really leaves me sick to my stomach. 
Some people, some people are absolute scum. I mean, I tried to be peaceful and he still knifed me like a little bitch. I mean, what are you gonna do about it though? That actually makes me angry. I mean, it really does. Come out like a pacifist and end up just like a punk. And that's like, I always feel guilty for playing these games like a total brigand, but these games always punish you for not being an asshole. And so from now on, I guess I'll just be an asshole the rest of the game and just be like, no. Just punk people hella hard. And is this a moment if you have it? I can tell you're getting restless. If you don't mind me saying so, princess, all of us are. We've been preparing the riots that would divert Shyam's men and let us strike the palace for many months. Now that the rightful queen of Bimra is here, every day spent waiting is painful. I... yeah, there's Kanika right there. I have to admit I feel a bit redundant. It feels as though the revolution was planned out before I ever arrived. Oh, most of the planning was done by others, but you're the central figure anyway. In fact, there's something for you to do right now. A matter's come up only you can handle. Three potential supporters of your revolution have all come here to speak with Avanash, but we've informed them that they'll be speaking with you instead. They're the nobleman Kalyan, the Naga trade master Jalesh, and the grain merchant Rabanjit. Bunch of grasping opportunists if you ask me, but help us help. What should I know about them? Give me everything you know. Avanash briefed me, so I'll tell you what he told me. Firstly, Kalyan comes from one of the wealthiest families in Bimra, powerful even now, and he's been trying to get on the council for years, but Vijay hasn't gone near him. So Avanash got in touch, and here we are. Frankly, none of us trust him much. We think he might try to seize power after the coup. So he thinks he can outsmart me. I think I can work with that. Jalesh is pragmatic. He came to Bimra with a cart full of bribe money. He's made every coin of it count. No one touches him, not even Ronvir, because he's become one of the most influential Naga in the city, but reach... But his reach ends at the slums. We're not sure what he's offering, but it's probably worth listening to. Sounds like a man of business. I'll treat him as one. We can promise justice for the Naga. Let's do that. Finally, Ramanjit. No one else is expecting much from him. He's a grain merchant, and his business has been doing about as well as you'd expect, given the length of the drought and the competition from the Naga Empire. He wouldn't much talk about what he's offering. He wanted to speak with Avanash personally. He was surprised to hear that he'd be talking to you instead. Don't worry, we've posted men on him to make sure he doesn't try anything stupid. We know these men won't rat us out to Vijay. We're not letting any of them leave until our plans are put into action, and we're looking over all communication they send and receive from the building. All the same, take care. You can never be too cautious. Okay, so let's talk to Kalyan first. Kalyan is the guy that they were worried was going to try and seize power. Priestess! Or princess, I'm sorry. Princess, I never gave up hope that you were out there somewhere. It's the grandest honor of my life to meet you, and it'll be grander honor still to serve you. And so... I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Why don't you skip straight to what you want from me? This is the guy that we were worried they were going to betray us, and so I want to take power from this conversation by forcing him onto his heels. I'm going to pretend like I don't even know who he is. I'm sorry, but which one were you? It's so hard for me to keep all the names straight. Oh, uh, I understand what you mean. You can call me Kalyan. I know I've got so I know you've got so many terrible, terrible burdens, and I think you, I thank you for the making the time to meet with me. I thought perhaps you might be able to lift some of those burdens. I might be able to lift some of the God. My dys dyslexia is hitting me hard right now. This is really bad. I thought perhaps you might be able to lift some of the burden. I thought perhaps I might be able to lift some of those burdens from your shoulders. Oh, there's a word missing. No wonder. I thought perhaps I might be able to lift some of those burdens from your shoulders. It's a typo. That's why it's killing me. So what do you think you can do for me? I mean, I can act naive the whole time so that he thinks he can outsmart me. Let's do that. Oh, I hope so. It's such a burden keeping this coalition together. Too much for any one person to manage. I think I might be able to take some of those burdens away. Let me get to the heart of the matter, princess. I've got a personal guard of 20 mercenaries, and I'm willing to lend them to you as troops. They'll follow your orders right up until you're safely placed on the throne, and as an added bonus, once you've proclaimed the power, once you've reclaimed the palace, they'll even be your personal bodyguard until things calm down. What do you say? Yeah, I'm not an idiot. Absolutely not. Oh, Avanash wouldn't want me using them as bodyguards, but I'll accept them as my soldiers. Uh, Princess, you should really reconsider. Your safety is paramount. I know it's paramount, and that's why I'm preventing you from assassinating me. Uh, Princess, I'm pretty sure you've misread my intentions. All I want is to serve your coup. I would never... So we can be super hardcore and we can have him killed on the spot. I'm glad to hear it. If you pledge your troops, that's fine, but if I see them come near me, I'll have you executed. Or I'll have you executed. <laughs> You'll be executed. You understand me? As you say, princess. Yeah, we took control of that situation. 
We said, you don't give me soldiers, I take your soldiers. And then they don't come near me. I keep you as a hostage while I take your soldiers. This is what happens when the game pushes me. Memta. Sounds like an organization that'd be operating like giving out food in Africa or something. The representatives of Mamta were found giving out grain to, <laughs> to, to starving peasants in Somalia. Oh poor dear. I was afraid we'd find I was afraid we'd find you in this state. Well, even fine jewelry needs a bit of cleaning up every now and again, doesn't it? A hot blood scrub's better than anything, let me tell you that. Yeah, I uh Huh? I mean, ever since those traitors killed the king and the queen of this great city, my family's starved to death and my street's been taken over by Naga. So if there's anything keeping you, the rightful queen of the city, from bringing my family back and driving the Naga out, well, I'll be happy to carve them open, let me tell you. I hadn't actually planned on driving out the Naga. Yeah, well, I suppose you're going to be really busy. One thing at a time, one thing at a time. It's kind of a weird conversation. I don't know. It's a bookshelf. Shelf is tightly packed wall of books with numerous subjects. Avanash has clearly assembled quite a collection. A few titles stand out to you immediately. Fishing in small creeks. Thoughts and theories of chaos. Advancements in medicine. A survey of serpentine reproductive anatomy. Advancements in herbs and medicine. You take the book from the shelf. Does it do anything? Oh, yeah. There is stuff. It puts stuff in your journal. Hold on. Let me get the rest of them. So let's see here. Fishing in small creeks. There's a sublime beauty to earning one meal at a time that all men should experience. Thoughts and theories of chaos and in theories of uncertainty and turmoil, the enlightened man finds one comfort that all this was inevitable. Serpentine reproductive anatomy. Needless to say, this material is not over profoundly disturbing, but illustrative of the factors that make Naga so monstrous to behold. Okay, and advanced herbs of medicine. Entire realms such as those south and east of Naga controlled forests must trade dearly for medicine so that our people to our people are com or, so the medicines that to our people are commonplace oh princess yes if you will please kindly indulge me I'm gonna need to ask you some questions soon getting your history together of course I'd be pleased to thank you uh, and princess Asha it's an honor and a pleasure it truly is I look forward to seeing you once you've got a moment all right the weirdest thing whenever I do like these extended recording sessions I get the hiccups it's inevitable. Anytime I spend time speaking, I end up getting the hiccups. I don't know. I'm Sharada. I make my living by trading volumes between Bimra and the cities out so far as Taxila, and this is not what Ah, and this is not what you're interested in talking about, is it? I'm sorry, it's been so long since I've had a conversation with a person of high birth that wasn't insufferably boring. After about a year of being out there, I'll tell you, boring is good. I craved boring. Of course. Well, all my wealth has gone into helping organize and keep together all of Avanash's little ventures, so if this doesn't pay off, I think I could take Boring out of the picture myself. Not that I don't already appreciate it, but you're already wealthy. Why have you backed me? I don't know. Why don't you guess? Loyalty to my parents, perhaps? The thrill of it? Ah, she said she hated being boring, so the thrill of it seems right. Let's face it, being part of an uprising is fun. Chaos and change are always more interesting than the status quo, even when the status quo is all that's keeping things together. Who who was I going to support? Vijay, who was unlikable but safe, or the sweet young underdog princess? Now that's a chapter of history I want to be part of. Good luck, by the way. So we nailed the we hit the nail right on the head. Ramanjit. Ramanjit, as I recall, was the grain merchant. Princess, it really is you. I can't believe it. I'm one of your humblest subjects. You have my everlasting gratitude for deigning to speak with me. You came with a request, did you not? Princess, I know how terrible things are in the slums. That's why I do everything I can to help them. I supply several local traders with foodstuffs and essential goods in exchange for whatever they have to barter with. I'm not proud to trade beyond my caste, but I perform a necessary service and I'm rewarded for it. The only traders are the black market, so you're their supplier. I won't lie, I want to be a regular merchant again. My contacts have been pressuring me as of late, and I think I prefer some more genteel trading partners. What I want is a guarantee that I'll have work once you're in power. And in exchange? In exchange, I'm responsible for delivering meals to JD's men on occasion. I happen to know you're going to use riots to draw out Shyam's boys. Well, they're just waiting for riots to happen so that they can steer him against the Naga. I deliver food to him every day. It'd be an easy matter to slip something into his men's food at the right moment. You're not going to get another chance like this. You have to know that. You have to. Well, then I think we have a deal. You won't regret this. Okay, and so I guess these are my alchemists. 
Let's talk to Jalesh and see what he has going. It's always a good sign when I'm referred directly to the person in charge. It's good to make your acquaintance, Princess Asha. And to make yours. I never know how much small talk is called for, so I suppose I'll risk being blunt. I'm connected to City Naga all the way up to Council Rhea. If I believe your administration will genuinely support my people, I will ensure that they are well disposed to you and your rule. I'll need more than your disposition. I'll require support. There's not much support I can offer you before you're in power. We are understandably skittish about getting on the council's bad side. Ron Veers in particular. I admire your willingness to push for all that you can get, but this is simply a bridge we can't cross. There's no point in making a deal now. Okay, so we can turn him down. If you're offering me after the fact support, you better not ask much. Okay, then there's no point making a deal now. We'll deal later when I'm in power. Fair enough. We'll speak again. A deal and Madu. Welcome back to Decent Company. With any luck, you'll never have to set foot in the street slums again. <laughs> We're in the slums right now. Are you planning to carry me out? Something about saying with any luck doesn't scream confidence. It's good to see you again, I guess. I don't remember who Adil is. Who's Adil? He's not on my list of people. You know what I meant. This has been a long nightmare for all of us, you know. I would have given anything not to put my wife through this. Pretty well scrubbed for somebody who's been through a, through a nightmare. There was a riot on our lands. Fifteen peasants and two of our guards were dead within an hour. We'd barely put up the funeral pyres before Vijay's men rolled up and told us they were giving our land to some um up-jumped widow like she could do a better job than we could. We've been living with the relatives in the city ever since. Now that's how Vijay does business. If you can't improve things, change faces. Sorry to hear that. Fifteen peasants dead and two guards dead? Sounds like me. You failed to do your job. Oh, sorry to hear that. I guess I'm gonna need support, so I guess I should put my grievances aside. I'm not gonna call them like I see them when I still need people to help put me on the throne. The point is that I didn't deserve this. Neither did Kanika, neither did you. The slums think just because we're on the top, everything goes wrong in their lives is our responsibility, and Vijay, the vicious fool, has seized power on that lie. It's time that we got what's ours back. Okay, so we've got a little bit of the old aristocracy here, I guess. I still don't know exactly how it is we're supposed to help. We've been helping the historian with his notes, and we've been bringing over what jewelry and money we've been able to save, but... Well, I wish we could just wait out our relatives until you've taken power, and it's our turn to help out. I don't really feel very safe here. You're not very safe anywhere. I get used to that. I just wish things could go back to the way that they were. Why did the people have to ruin it with riots and violence? Why did everything have to get so ugly? Things were broken then, and they're broken now. Let's worry about tomorrow. If there's anything I could do, let me know. But I just feel so helpless. Ever since they started rising up in the first place, I felt helpless. But what could have been done differently? What could anyone have been? What could anyone have done? It comes back to that original sentence that was in the beginning of the game by Rhea, the counselor, where she said she feels like everything's going to happen no matter what you do, and that we're just going to be a footnote in all this anyway. So we might as well just get on with what's to come the next day. And I very much get that feeling. I think that was basically the most foreboding sentence in the entire game. Ah, I can't tell you what it's like to see you again. It's like I found a place in the old days, back before Vijay destroyed everything and drove Bimra into the dirt. None of us can wait for him, or none of us can wait to take him from the throne. It wasn't enough for him to seize power. He had to raise up Shyam, Laxmi, and Ranvir as well. The worst part has been watching Ranvir destroy our religious order. One collapsed or corrupt temple at a time. When the day comes, his minions try to defend him. I look forward to destroying them. Yeah, so you're mad that he destroyed your religious order, so you're knifing random innocent priests in the street? We need to get rid of her. I don't blame the people who follow him. Not all of them have a choice. There's always a choice. Even when one's choices of serving an evil master of death, those are choices, and death is the correct one. Don't tell me the easy path is the only one. To fix Bimra, you need to destroy those responsible for its downfall. Those are the ones who have murdered your parents and condoned their betrayal that makes the justice so much sweeter. We need to get rid of Kanika. 
Kanika's a liability. She's a baby with the bathwater type of person, and you can't have people like that in your operation because they tend to take, like we already saw, she causes collateral damage, and that's not something we can afford when there's a slum full of people that are ready to rise up and murder. We need the slums on our side if we're going to make this happen, and they're already on Ronvir's side. And so someone like Kanika, who just like wipes everybody out with a shotgun approach, like poor Bogwan, is not somebody that we want to operate with. She's a thug, just like the person she's opposing. Sickens me to my stomach. I don't even want to look at her right now. There's no turning back now, Asha. We have a number of petitioners from all over the city eager to see what you're capable of. Would you see them in their needs or press onwards? I'll speak to them first. I already spoke to them. Did I miss somebody? Let me look at my map. Avanash, Naga supporters, and militia captain. Let's go talk to the captain. I guess we missed a couple. Kanika says, you're the real thing. All along, I was wondering why it was taking so long for Avanash to find an urchin who looked right. And it turns out to be the crazy bastard actually had and had been looking for the actual princess. He found me, didn't he? Don't waste a damn waste of time if you ask me. You've been rooting in filth for years now. Not like there's much difference between you and my other gutter rats. There is, trust me. Well, Avanash seems to think that you sweat fine wine. You must have drank a cup of it. That's fine with me. I think you'll be about as welcome on the city's throne as a drug, as a dog dropping. Why are you even here? You know all those big mean bastards carrying weapons around the city? I know of them, yeah. I like killing them. Avanash said that this was a good trade for a growing lad with my potential, so if you'll be so good, let Avanash know I'm starting to get bored again. So of course you got the opportunistic killers that just want to kill people, you got the sociopaths and the psychopaths that just want to get in on the violence. It's weird how in this game they managed to come together with all the people that show up in times of time, like, times of trial and strife. These people, all these people show up, and it's interesting that they've made a catalog. I wonder if they had meetings with the developers where they're like, alright, so who shows up in a time of trouble? You got opportunists, you got killers, you got thugs, you got gangsters, you got people just trying to hold everyone else together. Like, I wonder if they made a list and they consciously tried to include everybody because it shows tremendous foresight in the writing of the story. And they're manipulating my emotions right now, and that's a bad thing normally in real life, but in a storyline, that's what you want. You want the storyline to manipulate people's emotions. You want them to hate certain characters and to like others. Like, I'm still angry. I can feel the burning in my stomach right now about Bogwan. I'm still angry about it. Although partially I'm frustrated with the fact that the fighting system had no explanation whatsoever, but on the other hand, it was just like press X and press Z with nothing else. They need to explain that a little bit better. But on the other side, it's like I'm angry that the character who I had children to look after is now dead based on something that was like outside my control. No tutorial, no nothing else. It was just like push buttons and hope that you win. You know, I've seen you before. I was one of ten Naga who met with your mother and father after my family and I first came to Bimra. I thought it was a great honor. Back where I came from, I was no one. I thought perhaps here I could make something of myself. I thought Naga society had more social mobility than ours. In theory, any Naga can become anything. In practice, a Naga gets good at being a politician or a merchant or a commander. Everyone's happy and the Naga fills that position until death. That worked fine until we got better at living to old age. Now we have a lot of Naga, young and old, with nowhere to go. Bimra was fertile ground for a new community. That explains a lot, no kidding. Well, we're most of us rooting for you. It's not like anyone else in this game has our interest at heart. It's been a long time since we had ourselves as a local champion. Okay, so is that everybody? That's everybody. I think I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me. Oh, did I hear that correctly? Asha, you're going to poison your enemies to regain your throne? History will remember that. Your legacy will... A queen doesn't... I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it because it saves my men's lives. As you say, it was your decision to make. I should not have spoken. That's right. You best remember, a historian's place is behind the person that rules. There's very, very strict rules. There's bad things happen to historians. I'm not saying this like I'm going to do anything, but I'm saying, having studied history, that bad things happen to historians who report things in a way that the local duchy or the local Hansa doesn't like. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Bad things tend to happen to that historian and his whole family. Having read history and knowing how things played out with the Medici and things like that, there's a reason why it's difficult for us to piece things together about the Medici. It's because they were very, very good at whacking people who didn't report things in the way that they precisely wanted. And when you made a portrait, it better make them look good. They better be shining in the sunlight. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Unrest, a game that is manipulated. You can tell that I'm becoming emotionally invested in the story and I'm getting frustrated with certain aspects. I do wish that the fighting system, though, like, give me, like, a boxing portion where I learn how to fight, like... We had a number of characters who were already in the slums. Teach me how to fight with them so that I'm not losing characters like Bogwan 
over dumb shit like that altercation so at least I can fight back. Give me a tutorial or something. Because just throwing me into the middle of it is just like, well, I didn't even know- I've played the game already and I didn't even know there was a fighting system in the game because it had never come up before. In six hours of playing the game, I had never gotten into a fight until that time. And so it just goes to show there's stuff for me to discover as I play the game. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi-do from me to you.